This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, Halloween's coming up. Hey, Kent, do you know where to get World Series tickets right now? Uh, probably not on Netflix, which I've been watching a lot of American Vandal on there. You know what? Speaking of watching things, Sassine made me watch something like, made me go, what the living fuck? All that and more coming up with Squid this week. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 191 for Thursday, the 25th of October, 2018. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Kent. Usually with me is Amos, but we have Squid. Oh, God, you brought me back three (laughs) weeks in a row. What the hell? Yeah, dude, like, it's crazy. Uh, You filled in for an episode, and then you were Amos and my guest and now we said you know what um this is working better without amos Uh, so (laughs) it's now the kent and squid show you know what finally they get the two of us together alone so now we can actually talk all the shit we want to (laughs) all about amos (laughs) like that one time when you stayed over at his house um what's it now (laughs) 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 oh my gosh dude what a week man halloween is coming up We've got a Halloween party going on at our house this Saturday. It's going to be a bunch of people. The house is a mess. We had so much shit to do. Uh, Building uh, decorations and games and all this kind of stuff. My buddy and I are building like a big Plinko board that we're going to have. Like at the bottom of it, it's going to be these like uh, uh, basically mystery drinks that whatever number you get, you have to take this shot of whatever. I mean, it could be... It could be uh, you know, a straight shot of Jack. It could be a real sweet mixed drink. It might be milk. So just drinking regular is just not enough. It's not <laughs> enough just to get drunk by having a little bit too much. Now you got to like make some craziness out of it to where you forget what the hell you just drank, but you liked it, but now you're doing some, <laughs> drinking something else, and you're like, what the fuck was this? I don't know because – You got to make a sport up. of it. Like it's got to be, you know, you have to enhance the drinking because if you just sit around and drink, I mean, now you're now you're an alcoholic. And the problem with that is, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what what have you been up to? Oh uh, man, I've been struggling now that my socks are in the series, and they're coming to L.A. I decided that I was gonna, I was bound and determined to get tickets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So bound and determined on, you know. A week before, I was like, okay, I know the Dodgers are going to win. I start searching for tickets, and of course, Dodgers aren't releasing them anywhere. So I start going on all the sites, and then I start seeing, like, as soon as as soon as the Dodgers win, they all start popping up and boom, 600, 800, 1200, 1300. Of course. Seven, uh, what was it? The highest I saw so far was behind home plate at $12,000. That yes, is... that look on your face. Twelve. You Do... can buy a. Go to Kia. Go buy a Kia. Turn. Take that Kia over to Dodger Stadium. Say, I will give you this car for tickets because that's what you're basically doing. Yes, that dude. Who who is buying? I mean, it's got to be like. I mean, it's in L.A. Right. So Hollywood's right, right down the street. Somebody's going to buy those tickets. There is not enough actors that earn enough. You got to remember, only like the top echelon earn the money that you need. To go out and buy, oh, you know what? Let's go see the Red Sox games. Oh, it'll only be 11000 per person. Let's take four or five people. That's $44,000. Oh, yeah, you know that Mercedes just traded in. Get the money that way. We're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, trade in one of the Mercedes. Uh, yeah, uh, that dude, oh, no. that That is crazy. I thought Hamilton tickets were expensive. When we were in New York, we were going to go see Hamilton, and the nosebleed seats were like a thousand bucks a piece. Jeez, and it's like nope. Now we'll yeah. go ahead and get perfect seats for a lesser play and spend like I don't know a tenth of that for both the tickets. Even in L.A., when uh, when uh, Rent came to L.A. and when um, Phantom of the Opera was here, you didn't even see ticket prices like that. And we will actually spend because we don't have theater here. So when you got a good theater production, you know, we, we spend and we wouldn't even touch prices like that. Right. Right. That's crazy, man. Hey, um, 
you watch Netflix, right? You, you yeah. got Netflix. Have, have you ever watched American Vandal? You mean how to draw dicks on 28 cars? <gasps> Dude, we just started watching this uh, <laughs> this week. My son and I uh, started watching it. Holy shit. I... Okay. Let me ask you. Let me ask you really quick, because you're fresh. You're you're still pretty fresh. Yeah, we're about three episodes in. How many episodes did you get in until you figured out that it was just a parody? When you stop, when you when you actually stopped guessing that it was real, and then how many more episodes? Uh, how much farther did you get when you started questioning? Wait a minute, could this have actually happened? Right. Okay. So, disclaimer: going into the show, I knew that it was a parody. I right. so I I knew that going in. Uh that being said, it's very well done. Everyone is very natural. The only thing that's a big giveaway that it's that it's not real is that they are saying the funniest off the wall shit and not laughing about it and like not cracking at all. That's the only giveaway to me that these are actors and not real people. Yeah, but how many times have you said some of that shit and haven't, like, in personal conversation and haven't, like, busted up? Oh, sure, but but they're they're describing real things that are happening. Do you see the ball hairs? Get, count the ball hairs. There's no ball hairs on the cards, <laughs> but they're ball hairs on his drawings. Exactly. Every time he draws, you cannot forget the ball hairs. <laughs> have, okay, so let me ask you this. Have you seen the trailer for the second season? No, I haven't. I haven't checked out the second season yet. So that's... actually, I stopped watching at the third episode because I'm afraid to find out if it was really him. I don't want to know at this point oh, because geez. I so don't want to believe it was him. Yeah, because it's yeah. that well written. I actually like. I I got lost for a second. I said, "This actually seems real for a second. Right? There is a possibility this happened, and they're parodying it, but it's parodied off of a real story. Yeah, it feels real. Yeah." Um, so the the second season is someone poisoned the lemonade in the lunchroom, and every student instantly gets the shits and starts <laughs> shitting like everywhere. Like they're running down the hallway, shitting themselves, shitting on the floor. Somebody grabs a trash can and shits in it. Uh, that's the trailer for season two, and that's what drew me in to start watching season one. <laughs> Oh my God, that is great! Now I remind you once again, ladies and gentlemen, people in the audience, I did not bring up the poop because for some <laughs> reason, every time I'm on your damn show, and I do meet every single time, and that's all seven times, somebody brings up poop. Yeah, that's yeah, that's guaranteed. Um, yeah, that's that's weird, man. Because I, I mean, once in a while, Amos and I will bring up poop, but like not with any regularity. <laughs> No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, every time you're on, the conversation just goes to shit. <laughs> it, it, it's the curse. It's the curse of the Sean. <laughs> Sean turns any conversation into shit. Oh, my uh, God. So speaking so of watching are, things. Are you, are you still really, I mean, how excited are you to get into the second season, though? Oh, dude, I, I can't wait. Like, I'm enjoying the hell out of season one, but I feel like I have to, like, this is the, the penance for getting to season two. <laughs> like, I gotta, I have to get through this before I can go to season two. It's kind of like watching season one of Black Mirror, where you know you gotta watch it, because there's gonna be some stuff that comes up later on, but you're just, you gotta stomach through that pig <laughs> oh to my get gosh. to the Star Trek. Yeah, that's, man, yeah, first episode of Black Mirror was was insane dude all right so speaking of watching things that um that are crazy what what did you get into this weekend well on saturday i got really bored and i was like oh wait a minute i keep hearing about this diamond club movie party oh wait they're doing leprechaun four and in, leprechaun in the hood oh you know i'm gonna watch that because it's got iced tea <laughs> in it it's got the leprechaun it's got willow as the leprechaun you cannot beat that shit that is just gonna be great yeah so so I start joining most of the Diamond Club people, and I start having a great time. It's just like when we used to do the same thing in my living room, where we'll pack the living room with 20 people, and I'll just start randomly rifling off about the movie. And this is like about, what, three years before? I think Amos could tell you it was about 
sophomore year of high school, we started doing that with everybody and it just continued on for a while. And then we found out about MST 3k and we're like, Holy mm-hmm. shit, they took our idea idea. So I joined a uh, session and I didn't even know that the second movie we we're going to watch was repo the muse, uh, the, uh, opera. Yeah. Yeah. I actually never got a chance to check out repo before I heard about it, but I thought it was going to be like repo man. Cause those two came out right up at the storylines came out right about the same time. Uh-huh. So I was like, Oh God, repo man was so kind of blase. It wasn't good gore. It wasn't bad humor. It was just blase. And then I start getting into it from the first note. And then I start going, Hey, wait a minute. You guys are talking about Alexa. That's Alexa from spy girls. Dude, that's the that's that's Giles from Buffy. That's so and so from this. And oh God, Paris Hilton with her head face getting tore off or falling <laughs> off. Dude, you cannot beat that. It was, dude. That movie is something else, man. Um, it's one of if you couldn't tell <laughs> during the <laughs> during the uh, watching, it's one of Sassian's favorite movies. And... Oh no, you, hearing her like you know belted out like every so often. Rest of us are making evanescence jokes. <laughs> right. Man, I I don't know. It's not it's not my cup of tea. It's I mean, it's fun to watch with people because it's just one of those kind of movies. But like I would never choose to watch this this movie by myself. But but Sassy has seen it like thirty or forty times. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. One theater, one night, pack it full of people with whoever you want in there. Your choice of the movies, but your selection are of these four movies. The original Toxic Avenger. Oh. Swamp Thing. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Or Repo. I choose one. Choose one. Pro- oh my gosh, dude. That, oh, this is a tough oh, one. But no. I think I would have to choose the Toxic Avenger. Because I've I've seen that movie probably fifteen times, but I haven't seen it in a good twenty years at least. I would I would pack the theater with the Diamond Club movie party crew, and it would be a blast. I'm with you, but I would choose Swamp Thing edges out um, edges out Toxic Avenger just that little bit, just for that sex scene over by the swamp. <laughs> Where are you going, dude? She's getting algae in her cooch. Oh, jeez, that uh, that movie. I hope one day they actually remake Swamp Thing and like be more true to the to the DC comic because that's got potential. The '80s movie is '80s all the way through, and it just—I don't <laughs> think I, that's another movie I haven't seen in over twenty years. I don't think it would play well today. Exactly. That's what makes it so great is it is it's kind of like watching Blackula. It is so epitome seventies horror. <laughs> yes. Seventies black exploitation horror that it makes it perfect for today. Cause you know that would never get made ever again. Same thing with like Pootie Tang. You can never make a Pootie Tang again. You can never do she's gotta have it again. Um I'm gonna get you sucker. Uh, yeah, like you probably could do something similar, but it would be like over the top parody. It wouldn't be just pure no, you, exploitation. The minute you show boobs, there's going to be a protest outside. The minute that you show dick, there's going to be a protest outside. The moment that you make any type of a joke that's remotely offhanded for the sake of we know that this is offhanded. The, point of the joke is it is so ridiculously offhanded there's going to be a protest you can't make you cannot do like the teen movies or the you'll never see another scary movie you'll never see another airplane movie god i would die for another airplane or a play too i want to see what happened to those fake pilot the autopilots yeah the the inflatable uh autopilot did Uh, they have kids yeah. <laughs> um yeah, dude, I don't know. I I think um I think those could play today. Uh it'd be different jokes, of course. Uh well, one of the issues with with Airplane was that that movie was rated PG. Uh so if that came out today, like basically oh, that's just a hard R. The exact script. Yeah, it would totally be an R. 
Yeah, and it was before PG-13 came out, so they couldn't even give it a PG-13. So you had to choose between PG and R. They're like, eh, it's not bad enough to be R. But my God, would it be R now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But R. speaking of movies, uh, th- those are old 70s and 80s movies. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out now. Uh, Jay, what do you have to say? Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of October 22nd, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Pro tip, only trust people who like big butts, for they cannot lie. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Game Night is in last place, still waiting for their first film. Team Vod Squad's in fifth place with $30 million. Team Movie Party's in fourth place with $45.9 million. Team Have a Drink is in third place with a strong debut from Halloween at $87.2 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in second place with $174.2 million. And in first place, it's Team Retro Misery with $190.2 million. That's your Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of October 24th, 2018. We are still in first place. Holy crap. How? You got lucky, dude. Dude, I I told people A Star is Born is going to make a bunch of money. It is. So far, the only movie that's made more is Venom. And of course, it's a comic book movie. Um, I'm afraid Halloween's going to beat it out, though. Probably by next weekend. I yeah, Halloween's definitely going to beat up Venom, but with uh, with the Stars Born, I was with you. It was either going to be fantastic, and all of Gaga's audience was going to follow through, or they were going to run for the hills because it's not a, it's not Gaga being Gaga and Gaga is born. It's Gaga going. I'm stripping myself of everything. I'm letting I'm letting Cooper take me where he's going to take me. Mm-hmm. And now for me seeing all three of the all three of the remakes seeing a fourth remake I I wasn't buying it. And I was like, "Oh, come on. Four times." I mean, you got the original black and white, uh you got uh Judy Garland, you got the Chris Christopherson and uh, Barbara Streisand which was so good. I don't know how you can follow that one up with this one. Yeah. But I'm hearing excellent things. I just, uh, it's the yeah, same the, story the, though. The Chris Christopherson one is the only one that I was familiar with prior to this one. Uh, so I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think I want to see it. I don't think I'm going to see it in the theater though. Uh, right now the, uh, the movie that I want to see is Halloween, but I'm hesitant of course, because RMP doesn't own that movie. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I, we, we definitely want to see that. Um, then when, uh, here in a few weeks, when Bohemian Rhapsody comes out, definitely going to go see that. And that movie, I have a feeling is going to make a ton. Of it's, it's for, another, it's going to be another one. It's going to do great or it's going to be spectacular fail. I don't know which way it's going to go. I know I'm going to go see it because I miss Freddie <laughs> and I miss yeah. hearing his voice constantly. You got to remember, we grew up in the eighties. I mean, yeah. My first, my first time remembering, I was watching Friday night videos on uh, t- what was it? Uh, uh, TBS, yeah, on TBS, Superstation TBS. Mm. And the first video I watched was another one bites the dust. And I, for like two weeks afterwards, I walked, I ran around that house singing another one bites the dust. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um. It's going to be great, I think, I hope. Uh, but one thing I do know is it's going to make a ton of money. It's going to be a great debut for Game Night, Team Game Night, uh, to, to enter the fray here. Yeah. Uh, I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. I don't think RMP is going to be on top very much longer. <laughs> and it's Who quite a while until we have it? a... Uh, Who dude, do you think has a big big shot on this one, then? Uh, overall? Like, who's going to win the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, that, that's a that's a tough one for this one. I think, ah, jeez, it could either be Game Night or Vod Squad. Vod Squad's got got a decent shot here. They've got Fantastic Beasts. They've got Goosebumps too. Oh wait, they've got they've got the new Robin Hood. That's going to earn negative money. So probably not yeah. Vod Squad. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna hurt them. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, movie party's got a decent slate. They've got, I think, they've got the most movies. Well, overall. who's got the who's got the big studio push? I know first is gonna have a, or sorry, first man's gonna have a big studio push because mm. uh, they almost got Gosling that trophy before. To get him that statue this time would be huge. I know they're gonna push for that. Um, a Star is born. There's gonna be a huge push for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, think Grizz, Griswold's going to have that push, but it's going to be a, a so-so fan standout. Dude, I, so, honestly, I think the moneymaker this season is going to be Ralph Breaks the Internet, and I'm not just saying that because RMP has it, but that's why yeah. RMP has it. Uh, this is going to be maybe not quite as big, but this is going to be this season's Incredibles 2. That's going right. to make the money, and... Man, we're probably going to drop down to like fourth, fifth place until Ralph comes out, and we're going to shoot right back up. I don't know if it's going to take us all the way to number one, uh, but it's definitely going to put us close. Um, so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, if you guys want to follow along with the B-Team movie draft, you can go over to tinyurl.com slash B-Team Winter 2018. 2018. So B-Team Winter 2018. Um, yeah, check it out. Uh, I swear, the next one I'm getting in on. I'm figuring some out. I'm getting in on. I'm taking you all on. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, we, yeah, we've talked about switching up the teams and and uh, you know getting some some new teams in. Like this season, we got Drunk Kids Gaming in. Uh, so yeah, we're all about switching it up and and getting some new new perspectives. Uh, one perspective that I really enjoy about Ritual Misery is our fans. And our best fans are over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. They like to show us that they give a fuck by giving us a buck. Or five or ten, because my, my challenge is still on. <laughs> Beat me. Beat my ten bucks a month, guys. Come on. It's not that much. It's two cups of coffee, two Happy Meals. Do you realize I went shopping and I bought a Happy Meal just to see how much it would cost me to buy a Happy Meal? Mm -hmm. And that, that shit's like five and a half bucks. Holy for, cow. For a Happy Meal. You're paying for the for, cardboard box. For, for four chicken nuggets, small fries, small drink, and a broken ass toy. I know if people can buy, if you could go to McDonald's and buy a Happy Meal, you can kick in that five bucks over to RMP and watch them like really take this uh, over the edge. Come on, challenge is still on. Someone will do it. Yeah, um, yeah. Thank you for that, Sean, and thank you to all of our patrons. Uh, check us out: Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery. Sean, oh shit, I have another bumper to play for you. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. I'm not playing with I'm not playing with Kent, dude. Last time <laughs> I did, I almost went to jail. I do indeed have a game for you. I hope it works. <laughs> Ah <laughs> uh, man, I put this together. No kidding. Like Jay, Jay has my number. I put this together about thirty minutes before we went live, <laughs> so I hope everything works appropriately. I am calling this game the best one hitters, and no, it is not about marijuana smoking. <laughs> it is about nineteen eighties one hit wonders. Oh crap! Oh, you're done for. So I know you're an eighties kid, like you said today already on this show but you're also a music nerd and i want to see if you can name these one hit wonders all right i got this let's see what you got i've got 10 of them lined up for you here is your first one Uh, Lips Incorporated, Funky Town, that, which is also covered. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, Lips Incorporated or Lip Sync, if you will. <sighs> yeah, that's the reason they did it because they were lip syncing the whole damn time. Yeah. You ever see their? Do you ever see their their um, videos? Yeah. Uh, 
broken already. All right, here's your second one. Go forward. Uh, Move ahead. Sorry, uh, Devo, whip it. That is it's indeed, not too late. That is indeed Devo. Oh, and I just realized I um, I should have done this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Trying to run all the boards and everything, it, it, putting everything together like in the last 30 minutes is uh, it's a bit of a challenge. Try finding out your host in a show with a few hours to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Podcasting is fun, guys. <laughs> All right. Podcast All right, Sean, rants. you are perfect so far. Here's your third one. I couldn't get away. Um of course, that's uh, seagulls. Um, seagulls, uh, Iran. Seagull is seagulls the name of the band? Yeah. No, it's flock of seagulls. Sorry, I... <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> I probably would have given it to you even if you just said seagulls, but I knew you knew the correct answer. <laughs> Weird ass haircuts that look like birds for the win. Yeah, like it look kind of looks like a flock of seagulls. All the time, I stop the world and melt with. Uh, I, of course, it's I stop the world and melt with you. Um, by modern English. <laughs> Damn it, dude! <laughs> you gotta go deep, man. You gotta go super, super deep. Come on. That's what she keeps saying. <laughs> Oh, come on, you damn thing. It's not working. Of course, it never does. There we go. It's scary. That's Frankie. Um, Frankie. Uh, God, what was the rest of the band's name? Frankie goes to some. Anyway, the songs relax. Uh, <laughs> yes. Subtitle, don't do it. The, the the first gay video that MTV played and like people didn't even realize it was a gay video and they go wait a minute all those guys they there doesn't seem to be any women in this so what's the name of the band uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood there you go. all right yeah you were like three quarters of the way there <laughs> for the whole, Frankie goes Frank Frankie Frankie. <laughs> Did you ever see her dance video, how to dance video that she made shortly after this video? I don't it, think I did. It is hilarious. If you ever get the chance, you got to look up Tony Basil's um, work, <laughs> uh, her um, how to dance videos. And of course, that's me. Well done, sir. Well done. Holy crap, man. You are perfect. Six for six so far. <laughs> Uh, that is Nina 99 Luft Balloons. Not <laughs> Luft Red Balloons, but Luft Balloons. That is correct. And Luft, of course, means air in German. Yeah, everybody goes, wait a minute, but they call it Red Balloons. And it's like, no, it's Luft Balloons. And we just like titled it Red because the balloons were all red. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, of course, here it's aha take on me. But God, I thought you, I was so hoping you would pull off some like 
Nick Kershaw or something. I was like, okay, he's gonna trick me. He always he always comes up with something that like throws me off, like the like the what was it, Back to the Future? Um, oh description. yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, the the Me Too movement of the '80s or whatever it was. That was a good one. <laughs> I, uh, so a lot of times the games that I, I put Amos through and the guest through on RMP, I will then put my son and his girlfriend through them. <laughs> and it's usually pretty good, but the 80s Me Too thing went way over their heads. Like 80% of them, they were just like, what? And then I would say the answer and they're like, what? <laughs> How? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, what are so, you talking about? So Back to the Future and Ghostbusters, I think, it are were the only movies that they knew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. And that's number, two, number eight. From you. Uh, can I can I say that it was uh, the Supremes? Tainted Love, but no, you're going to go with Soft Cell, Tainted Love. And then, um, actually, it wasn't Supreme that did it. It was, uh, what's her name? I can never remember the original artist's name on that one. So so who who are you going with? Oh, Soft Cell, Tainted Love. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. See, this one I thought was hard for me. Like, so, I was like, Soft Cell. Like, I know this song. I know the fuck out of this song. Not just because of Marilyn Manson and his, his yeah. cover of it, but... Uh, yeah, I could oh, not. Oh God, think... that was a horrible cover. So many better covers than that. That was just like I'm gonna be dark and brooding, just to be dark and brooding, and let me show you how emotional I am with this song. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of his brand. All right, so far you are perfect nine for nine. This is your final one. Dude, that song that song gave everybody the excuse to wear overalls again. <laughs> I swear, because of that video, it created the overall phenomenon of the '90s. Uh, that's uh, Dexter Dexter's Midnight Riders, um, or Dex, uh, yeah, Dexter's Midnight Riders. Come on, Eileen. Uh, Come on, it's either Dexter or Dexies. De oh God, you're like ninety percent there. Fuck it, I'm gonna give it to you. It is Dexie's Midnight Runners. Runners, not writers. Oh shit. <sighs> but you were you were so close. I had to give that to you. Uh, this is possibly the perfect or first perfect ten for ten of any quiz that I've ever done on this show. Well done, Sean. Holy. I can't wait for the crap. next one. The next. Uh, the next. What you know? This game? you know. The sad part is, <laughs> I was so fearful, and I was—I actually will say this: I was so fucking fearful that you were going to throw in some country one uh, one hit wonders, and some like like some crazy pop one hit wonders. That would have fucking thrown me, but you did. You stuck with nothing but mod rock and uh, <laughs> new wave, and that sealed that sealed your fate. All right, so ma making notes, <laughs> play country songs for Sean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, except when man. I except when I hung out with Amos, because then I go, oh yeah, he made me listen to that one for hours on end because he was in love with this girl, and I had to keep this one occupied during the days that he was with that girl. <laughs> well, I told you, we're, you and I are together, dude. We could have fun telling stories. Oh my god, like that is that is no doubt. All right, um, all right for this for this next little bit. I, this is the part where I am going to share my screen with you. Right. Um, because this is a visual bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video that's that's in keeping with the 80s music theme. Um, but, it, like I said, it's visual. And we've got a lot of audio listeners. So I'm going to need you to describe what you're seeing. Oh, God, the humanity, the horror. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to see if... Um, so I see the, nothing but ball hairs. So the unfortunate thing is that I... My OBS is... Um, kind of weird. 
It's kind of weird. So um, it's actually kind of being a, a butt right now. It's not always let the case. And, let me go ahead and share my screen out to you. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So here, this is. Oh, let me. Why is it like this? Let me blow that up. All right. Unfortunately, while I mm -hmm. play this for the audience over Twitch, uh, they're not going to see your reaction. They're only going to see me. So they're going to see me reacting to you describing this. Okay. Um, can you? Oh, I'll I'll make it. I'll make the screen bigger for you here in a second. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Yeah, because I got to get in. You can see the old man beard. Like, yeah. Uh, all right. So I am going to. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch over to. This I need to plug to this one right here. See viewers. that one right there. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and play this. So, Sean, if you can just describe what you're seeing here. Oh fuck! There's a guy on crutches with a pole that's right about six feet long, wrapped around his dick, and he looks angry. He wants it. He's saying, you're all ready for this. You're going to get upset. <laughs> he is banging this this strap-on pole against an upper crossbar with the most most fierce face ever while on crutches. You know, um, the crutches that wrap around your forearms, <gasps> not the ones that go underneath. And he's angry with it. He's like, I'm getting it. I want it. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, oh, and that face that's stuck on the screen right now too. That's that's fantastic. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, give it to me. I saw that. I don't remember who showed this to me. Somebody like tweeted it or some. I don't know. I don't know where it came <laughs> from. But I was like, okay, I have to share this with RMP. <laughs> I saw the sad part is I saw that once before, but it wasn't to Don't Fear the Reaper. It was the actual full production. And it gets way twistier. Way, way twistier than that. I can't even describe the the performance art insanity that it is. And Yeah, so I am I'm just surprised it did not become like a uh a strip, a strip show, dude. So what's what's crazy to me is that the so the original video of that is just it, it's not too uh, don't fear the reaper. It is just this weird artsy thing. Like imagine all that that you saw for like thirty minutes, but without the music. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah, it is. Um, it's disturbing. <laughs> Let's go with this. I have an angry strap on. Oh my goodness! Um, that doesn't get my title. I don't know what will. Okay, angry so strap. <laughs> I want to move. On. I'm going to skip something for now. We'll probably close with that. But for now, um, I want to go to this video that you shared with me um, <laughs> about she blinded me with science. So speaking yes. of 80s music, um, describe to me what this what this video is about. All right. There's this cool guy that I caught on to called uh, Todd in the Shadows. He's like one of those, I, I don't want you guys to know who I am, so I'm always going to be in the dark. But he takes one-hit wonders, and he takes hit songs and pop songs and just about any song, like – you subscribe to him on Fiverr, hit him with a, I'm not even sure with a, yeah, it is with a Fiverr, and say, here, or, I'm uh, sorry, Patreon, and say, here, rip this song apart, and he will rip it to shreds. He will go in, find a history of the band, what happened, how it came about, how they wrote the song, what they did with the song, but not in a boring way. He will do it in a way that will make you cry laughing sometimes. I think it was uh, with Hathaway. I, I damn near shit myself watching it. I was laughing so hard because he was just going off for days. And it was, this guy is so great. Dude, I I thought it was interesting. The um, So he talked a lot about the the artist, right? The, um, uh, I don't even remember his name right now. Oh, Thomas Dolby? Yes, Dolby. Yes, correct. <laughs> uh, 
and like all of the things that he did, like this dude is like a straight up nerd for real. Yeah. Like he's not just playing a nerd on TV. He is like a way like geeky dude that's all into tech and advancing the art of music production and um, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, super into electronics when electronics were like prohibitively expensive. And this dude has done uh, not just, you know, the one hit wonder that we know that we're familiar with, but he was a part of, of many different projects. And I'm trying to think of some right now that I know everyone has heard of. I watched this like three days ago and the titles are escaping me. Uh, but he Europa was Europa and the space people. Um, I think he did, uh, he did help score some movies. Yes. Not like Herbie Hancock, like, like Herbie Hancock, who really went into scoring, but he helped score a few. Uh, I think he helped with uh, Max Hedrum and Misfits of Science. If you, I doubt anybody remembers that show. I think I was the only fan of that show <laughs> that lasted like four episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you are. Uh, <laughs> And the fact that he actually, like the sample, the science is the top physicist in England at mm -hmm. Oxford at that time. And he actually has that same guy in his video. Yes. Or no, he wasn't just the top. He's like the top uh, TV physicist at the time. He was like the guy that you would like, you would sit and watch in your classrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It's, it's a fascinating video. It's like 15 minutes long or something. Uh, it's, it's a rather long video. I will go ahead and put the, the link in the show notes uh, so that everyone can can watch that uh, later at home. Um, and don't and don't just deep dive on this one. This is your kind of your like entry the gateway. Into it. This is the gateway drug. Like what he does, like what he does to Van Halen three. <laughs> oh, wow. He, he I mean, I'm surprised that Eddie Van Halen like exist after that because he just like totally tore up uh, Gary Sharon and Eddie Van Halen and just like uh uh you guys are not going to survive the chopping block on this one yeah so you're on this episode which means that you're going to have you're going to say your phrase and uh, it's going to lead right into a little um, uh, you're going to describe another video and then you're going to give your two cents uh, but before we move on to the video description, uh, your catchphrase would be? Uh, uh, fuck Apple. <laughs> so spoiler alert, everyone. This video, this next video that Squid is going to talk about uh, is a very anti-Apple rant. It is my goal to, to save people. I am going to save you from the cult of Apple. Yes, you're going to be healed from the hands of Steve Jobs, I tell you. This, there's a guy out there out of New York. Awesome, awesome guy. He, he got so tired of watching people get ripped off at so many computer stores and so many Apple stores and everything else. I mean, he, he tears up on, on Best Buy. He tears up on Dell. He tears up on every bad product. But it is his favorite thing to do to show you how to actually repair your Apple products when you take it in and they force you to try to buy a new one. So the next time your battery goes out or something and they say, oh, it's because uh, your little uh, liquid sensors like popped off and they're showing that, you know, you've dropped in water. No, you can actually get that repaired and there's ways to do it. He will show you how to do it. Now, here's the thing. To combat that, Apple has decided now with all their third-party um, repair shops that they have that if they don't follow the same guide, like, like they have to go to the same sites and everything, see what the geeks or what the Genius Bar said. And if they don't say the same thing the Genius Bar said, they will rip their uh, wholesale discount for Apple parts and make you not only pay a full price for Apple parts – but a, but also like a, I think it's like a penalty above that to remain an Ath Apple authorized re uh, repair shop. Yeah. Um, so I've got a couple thoughts on this. On so, what, all right. So one of the things that that was called out in the the video was that 
uh, this dude ordered batteries, right? For was it for iPhone, uh, iPad? No, it's for it was for his um, MacBook. MacBook, right? Yeah, yeah. He ordered them from a Chinese supplier. Uh, this I believe is the same company that makes the actual apples for, uh, or uh, makes the actual batteries for the Apple products, right? right? Like the same same factory, right? And well, anyway, they so Amazon or somebody, no, U.S. Customs, I think. Uh, snatched the the delivery like as it was coming into the country for being a a counterfeit product uh, mm-hmm. because I think the the batteries had the Apple sticker on them or so, something something to that effect right and this was not an uh, like those batteries uh, apparently are only supposed to go to Apple Inc right not to you know Joe Schmo. Um, I mean, okay, sure. There's probably something, something legalese in there that that we just don't know about. I don't know. So part of me is like, okay, I'm not gonna pass judgment on this. But the bigger picture of the situation that's a little bit disturbing and something that I don't like and is a, a big trend in tech right now is the the idea of ownership, right? So like. We're, the the trend right now is is moving away from owning a physical thing and going to a like goods as a service sort of thing, right? We've seen it with movies, TV shows, music. Uh, it's that's moving that way with um, oh software, of course. Um, everything is becoming service based, right? And we're gonna go that way with uh, eventually, like we're not gonna own our own cars. We're gonna gonna pay a, a subscription and we get Ubered everywhere, like in the robot Ubers and shit. Um, you know, that's all, that, that's kind of the trend right now. But also, in addition to that, is like disposable products. Like, you should not be repairing your your product. If you really need that thing repaired, then you need to get the, the original manufacturer to fix it for you. You need to pay their subscription fee so that you can either just upgrade to the next thing every year or, or they fix the thing. Uh, we've seen this in a disturbing way. We've seen this. Yes, okay, so Cruz even pointed this out in the chat. John Deere tractors. Farmers for decades have been repairing their own fucking John Deere tractors. That's something they do. That's a farmer's skill is to fix your own equipment. They have in, they have put software into these John Deere tractors now that they are not user repairable. If your shit breaks... Fuck off, unless you pay us to come out and fix it. Like, that's that's a disturbing trend. I'm not a fan. And that's it's related to this story because Apple wants to make their products to where only they can repair them. You want that thing fixed? You want that thing to last longer? Pay me. And that's, I don't like that. Like, I like products, like, I like taking my screwdriver set opening up the product, figuring out what's wrong, replace the thing that's burnt up, whatever, put the screws back in, and I'm good. Like, why can't we just stick with that model? And that's the thing. This is nothing, nothing, nothing new. Ford did it originally with all their parts to where they would make, they made it to where nobody can make aftermarket parts for their cars. And then all of a sudden government stepped in and said, "Uh uh-uh, no, you're not going to do this. you got to open it up after a while. We understand if you, you know you don't give away your patents, but you cannot force people to only use your stuff. Then we saw it like in 1976 with uh, with automotive still uh, with uh, warranties that if you use an aftermarket part, you're void your warranty. Government said no, you can use any part as long as it's of the same quality. Mm-hmm. Then we saw it with uh, we saw it with medications. Uh, medications you had a patent you can only use their medication this is the same exact thing over and over and over again mm-hmm. my only gripe and the only reason i harp on apple about it is because they were so bold and they did it so early on that it's in their U- eula agreement right your yeah. eula read your eula they have the right to actually come to your home pick up your mac Take it with them and revoke your right to use. They, it's in their eula where, and I'm not. This isn't like a, a, 
a Alex Jones like <laughs> no it is actually the in frogs there. are turning gay the <laughs> Apple agents are coming to steal your computers in the night to the point that actually Supreme Court actually had I think it's the ninth court actually had to say no they do not have the right to remove you your ability to use your product once you purchase it and it is yep. a purchase not a lease you must specify when something is a lease and something is a purchase which is why and i'm pissed off about sam at sprint for doing this because i had to follow into it i had no choice but sprint with their um any samsung program where you're gonna you're gonna lease all your Samsung products. There's no more purchase. It is a lease. Just come in once a year, change out your Samsung, and keep going. And then they did it with Apple, and then they did it with LG, to where now it's just all a lease. I work in and I work in an industry where I get to see people in cars, and for the longest time, a couple of years ago, I saw this huge influx of people not buying their cars anymore, not getting a loan to buy their cars. But doing leases, and then they find out they wreck your car. Oops, the lease, the the coverage doesn't pay for the entirety of the lease. Oh, not only they're out of a car because uh, the car is completely totaled and they can't use it anymore, but they're backwards on a lease. And on top of being backwards on the lease, they can't get a new vehicle because they're still in debt from the original car. Mm -hmm. So now they're completely out of cars. You're st you saw it with uh, the Prius. Remember, the Prius was originally a lease only. You're not allowed to own it yet. You, you're just allowed to lease it. The original Teslas were leases only. Uh, Tesla's doing the same thing with theirs, where you're not allowed to, like, if you buy a um, a um, totaled out um, Tesla and rebuild it, you cannot take it to one of their repair facilities and get anything updated or any any warranty work without paying them an additional fee of like $15,000 to even be allowed to even touch it. And then they charge you for all the repairs that you did. They actually charge you the repairs you did. That pissed me off yep. about Tesla. And I'm a Tesla fanboy. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting because uh, as, as Cruz has pointed out in our chat over at twitch.tv slash ritual misery, uh, live every Thursday at, <laughs> at 7 p.m. Central. Um, yeah, so Cruz Sometimes. points out, yeah, yeah, the seven or <laughs> shortly after. Uh, Cruz points out in the chat, though, when when uh, we were talking about the John Deere thing, he said that the farmers did win their their case, uh, their right to repair case. Uh, I need to I need to look into this a little bit more. Maybe we can flesh this conversation out uh, when Amos comes back. Uh, kind of have a, a a whole like make this a main topic uh, because it is an interesting topic, and I'm wondering how the John Deere case, what sort of precedent that sets and how that's going to affect uh, other issues, other other companies and their their EULAs and right to repair clauses and all this other stuff. It was fairly huge, but it was state only. It did not extend to the federal side. Oh. And that, that was the thing is they won it and they're using that as precedence for other states and other states are, of course, are citing it. Mm -hmm. But because it wasn't done on a federal level and it wasn't okay to, and it wasn't proven on a federal level, mm -hmm. it's still like California may abide by it. Nevada may not. And you saw that it's the same thing with the right to work versus the union thing where some States have a right to work program. Federal can't do anything about that. The other States have a unionized program. Can't do anything about that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we will deep dive on this topic again. I guarantee it. And um, between me, you, I and Amos, I think uh, I think it's gonna be a, a fun thing, especially if if we come with a, a shitload of, of research and notes. Um, it'd be oh, you know, it'd be fun. Like one of us moderate, like have it stage it as a debate sort of thing. Like one side takes the side of the corporations, and one side or one person takes the side of the of the end user or the consumer. Uh, Amos was always a good moderator for me. He got me out of a couple of fights <laughs> here and there. That would be fun. Uh, you know what else is fun? The New Year's Eve streamathon. Woo! We are getting close, folks. It is only about two months away. Uh, if you would like to be a part of the streamathon, whether you want to stream something yourself 
or be part of the behind the scenes crew, whether that's for promotion or tech support or graphics or uh, anything, anything whatsoever, uh, you can either email us at uh, ritual misery. Uh, let's go. Let's do this one. Podcast at ritual misery dot com. We have a lot of email addresses. But yeah, podcast at ritual misery dot com is a good place. Or what I would actually prefer is if you go to bit.ly slash streamathon2018 sign up. It's a bit of a mouthful. I'm going to throw it into the Twitch chat, and I'm also going to throw it into the show notes so that you just have something to click on. Um, <laughs> but check it out, bit.ly slash streamathon2018 sign up. We've got a great crew already signed up for this thing. Uh, we've got the likes of, I don't know if I should say this out no, loud. No, no, don't, 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 we've, don't. Not yet, not yet. Can't spoil it yet. It's not even. It's not even Thanksgiving, dude. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna tell them that you're gonna do a show. You can't tell them that because then they're gonna expect that your guys are gonna be on first at like oh I forget what time like uh like uh four hours before midnight. Um. Yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna give away the the schedule yet. The schedule will be posted sometime in December. We might even make it like a like a Black Friday surprise drop or something like that, and and get like a ninety percent solution schedule up there. Uh, but it's gonna be great. Uh, we are raising money for Extra Life this year. Uh, g- going back to the old standby of Extra Life, uh, they're great, man. Children's Miracle Network, hospitals for children. Uh, it's it's. It's a great charity. It's it's a wonderful partner to have in this, and it's going to be a blast. Um, so, again, that address is bit.ly slash streamathon2018 sign up. Um, I've got you know, a... No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask you, what did you... Now, last year, we had a lot of fun, and it was our first year of doing it on Twitch. Now, I've been watching this since, like, Amos first started it alone when I was driving that Lyft car, and I called in after that one... Uh, Old hair, old, old lady in the leather miniskirt started <laughs> grabbing me. I, yes. mean, I still got PSD for that one. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking 80 years old. Anyway, that was the first year he did it. And he did it alone. He did it for a full 24 hours. And that was fantastic. All of us would pop in. Then the next year, you guys said, no, let's get everybody involved. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite part about that first year of everybody being involved? Oh, my gosh. Um I think I think the best thing about it actually was the the satisfaction of of everything coming together because it's that especially that first year it was chaotic it was crazy trying to get everything organized and getting everyone to be where they were supposed to be at the right time uh, doing the thing that they're supposed to do at the right time uh, well most for the most part we had I think we were about ninety five percent success rate on that. Um, but yeah, getting that done and getting money raised and and all of that, and it was a success. Uh, it was great, man. It was um, it was absolutely wonderful. The, I mean, the shows were fantastic. The performers were awesome. They were spot on. They were great. Um, everyone had a wonderful time. Uh, the, the, uh, chat realm included. Everyone was was fantastic. But but the. For me personally, just the satisfaction of it all working and being able to raise money and give it to charity for something that we put together ourselves. Um, super satisfying. Now you, now you take that that first year that, that or that second year when you got everybody involved. Let's go to the last year. Last year was just a – it's a lot of first. It was first for a, a lot of people being on J uh, – Jay's uh, big voice. Jay's first time being on screen, first yep. time actually running a show. Yep. Fitz was doing awesome. Movie, uh, the movie club really showed up on that one. What was your favorite? What 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 did you learn between the two years that you're ready for this year? Oh my God, um, delegate. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing. Um, Last year, I think I, I tried to do too much. And by the time New Year's was done, uh, I mean, not only do I spend, I, I like, I catch like 30 minute naps here and there throughout the streamathon because I try to, you know, puppet master the whole damn thing. Uh, so once it was done, not only was I exhausted from, from that experience, basically being up for a day and a half, but I was exhausted from like 
three months of intense preparation and coordination and, and me like I, I formed committees and and like tried to relinquish a lot of stuff and a lot of people did help out and did things right but i still felt like i had to be the big coordinator do all the things and it was um it was mentally exhausting and i slept for about like a day dude like i i slept for probably like 18 hours or some shit on january 1st um and I'm not doing that again. So the lesson learned. <laughs> uh, no, luckily, I did so much work last year that that a lot of stuff we're going to use this year is just plug and play from last year. Change the word, change the date, change this, change that. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of the products, uh, like Jay, you were talking about Big Voice Jay, his sounders uh, that, that we had for last year, they're evergreen. They don't have a date on them. It's just the Diamond Club New Year's Eve Streamathon. <laughs> You know, and things like that that we're going to use again this year. So a lot of things don't have to be redone. Uh, but the things that do need done, I'm just going to like, okay, uh, hey, uh, volunteer. Oh, yeah, you. Okay, cool. That's you. That's your baby. Send it to me when you're done. <laughs> so with that said, what do you think some of the people, what would you tell the people to join in? What What could they grab out of this? What was the... What was the things from all that that you took with you and that you still carry with you that when you think back, you go, damn, that was fun? Oh, my gosh. I mean, so many things. That, so Have a Drink Show, uh, which was kind of introduced to Diamond Club through the Di the uh, New Year's Eve streamathon a couple of years ago. Uh, their show is always great. Um I love I love watching their show because they make it so interactive and it's a show about one of my favorite subjects beer. Um, <laughs> it's not only beer, about beer, beer, but beer is beer. like their their um, their focus subject, their focus drink, if you will. Um, you know, and I, I, when I met those guys a few years back, and they were just the most gracious hosts. They were uh, a blast to be around, and all of that like personality and and. Um, um, I guess friendship, I guess shows on screen as well. And they're very interactive with their chat too. Um, and, and that was the thing is with everybody that did something, you saw the friendship in between like Jen would start off. She's not even on for four hours. She's still in the trenches with all of us at midnight going, yes, chair on, let's do this. Yes. And then like when her time was on, we all would follow her and we'd stick with her and watch her show and cheer her on. Mm -hmm. And then we'd move on to somebody. They're like, Hey, we're just going to do a regular episode. And we'd cheer them on and everybody, this big pack just followed along. It was, it was, it was better than one of those bar crawls oh, in Santa Monica. That's a dude, that is a good analog for for what we did because it was every hour was raiding another channel and we would yeah. all just in mass just move to the next channel. And yeah. And absolutely. whoever whoever we just left would join in. Yes. And that was it. And it kept growing and it would shrink and would grow and it would shrink. People would get tired. Hey, I'm going to grab a sleep. Okay, I will wake you up. And we'll sit there on Skype and we would Skype them to wake them up. Hey, it's your <laughs> turn. Wake up. Yeah, and absolutely. That made it such a positive, positive experience. It made my New Year's because aside from going to see English Beat, my fiance <laughs> was away. I just moved into the new apartment with my new roommate. They were away. I was kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to kick it with everybody here. And I actually felt like that was a year that was really worth something. I felt, and I've been to big, huge parties, big, mm -hmm. huge events, and I never felt as included as with that crowd hopping from stream to stream to stream. Even when I, like, I was watching, I was watching at the English Beat concert on New Year's Eve. Like, I got English Beat right here. I got you guys right here, and I can't hear a damn word anybody's saying. But I'm reading this. I'm reading, and I'm texting. I'm like, yes. Yep. Even when I'm at a concert, I'm still with you guys, and that's something I want to bring in. I want to chip in on that, and I'm hoping more people go. Hey, I can't. I'm I'm not good on on live. I'm not good speaking. You guys, some of you saw. Like, actually, I can honestly say nobody did because there's only two people on Twitch in the room when I hosted by myself. <laughs> so I could say that nobody actually saw how bad I was struggling. I know I was struggling and I know how scary it could be. And that, 
everybody could do the face part. But you know how to draw. Some of you know how to create great, awesome graphics. Some of you know how to create awesome sounder bits that we can toss in out of nowhere. Some of you guys know how to clip the hell out of us and then create a midway, like a midpoint video of everything that's gone on so far. Some of you, I mean, everybody has something to bring. And I hope Absolutely. that none of I hope all you guys just kind of say, hey, I'm in on this. Let's do this. Let's make this ours and make it and bring back that huge Diamond Club community again. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, just one more time, that is bit.ly slash streamathon2018 sign up. Check it out. I've got one more thing to promote. Shortly after the New Year's Eve streamathon coming up, RMP is going to have his 200th episode. Can you believe that, Sean? We've been going for 200 episodes, Amos and I. So hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, let's discuss this because... The, the episode before New Year's Eve, who do you bring on every year? Uh, Richard Gunther for okay. our massive year-end review. The episode after New Year's Eve, who do you bring on? The one and only Tay Allen. And always your 100 block or your mi- big milestone, your 100, your 150. You Who do you have surrounded around that at the same time? Uh, I mean that varies. It could be um, well, it's usually either it could be Tom Merritt, Richard Gunther, or <laughs> Tay Allen, or Richard Gunther and Tay Allen. Oh, true. Yes. Is that what you're gonna do? do? Do I hear a Richard Gunther, Tay Allen, RMP, Aquardathon? Oh my God. Um, we're gonna have to look into the possibility of doing that. That sounds like a. I've been trying to do a a, a Richard Tay collab of some sort for for some time. And an aquathon or whatever is that what you said? Yeah, it's an <laughs> it's an aquathon. <laughs> that that might be something that uh, that might be worth doing. Uh, but check this out. One of the things for sure that we're doing in the in our 200th episode is kind of a retrospective of the last four years of this show. Yeah, no shit, we've been going for four years. And to do that, I want to know what the audience has enjoyed about Ritual Misery over the years. So there is a poll waiting for you at yellow420.com slash RMP200. So RMP, the number two, the number zero, the number zero. So yellow420.com slash RMP200. Please go take that poll. Uh, it'll take you less than a minute. It's like five questions, I think. Uh, basically, just asking what's your favorite this, what's your favorite that, what did you like about this, etc. Uh, it'll it'll take you less than a minute. Please go fill that out. I'm going to be putting together a compilation video uh, that shows some of the the highlights, audience favorite moments, and things like that uh, to kind of celebrate 200 episodes. Uh, so if you like us. <laughs> Uh, that's that's one way that you can help us out is is go fill that out. That would be awesome. Um, Sean, you're not the only guest that we get on the show, as we know. Uh, <laughs> next week we are going to be bringing an old audience favorite back for another episode of RMP. Fitz is coming on Ooh. next week. Fitz, uh, Fitz, Fitz. Always, always a great time when Fitz is on. Uh, looking forward to to the craziness that he's going to bring up. Um, so yeah, check us out next week, uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m. Pacific. Sean, where can people find you on the internet if they want to look you up? I'm at the one and only Twitter that I have at I am Squidicus because that's all I really have for I am Squidicus. I got everything else, but I never use it. So yeah, I am Squidicus. Okay. <laughs> I am RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Uh, Del Noche or Del Noche 77, pretty much anywhere else on the entire internet. Uh, look me up on your social media of choice. Uh, this show, of course, is at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Um, yeah, but what we'd really like you to do is go over to RitualMisery.com and check out all of the links that we have over there. We have support links if you want to uh, help us out with our Amazon affiliate. We've got links to our Patreon. We've got links to everything 
going on over there. Uh, we would love to get your feedback. Uh, email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Um, like I said, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritualmisery and diamondclub.tv. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Kevin McLeod, for allowing us to use the music that we are playing in the background right now. For me, for Sean, and for the absent Amos, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Do you know I still quote that in my sleep every so often?